Is Dallas drafting a quarterback? Well, it's a strong maybe, according to Adam Schefter, who said this yesterday. The Cowboys might be a sleeper team in the quarterback market during the draft because at some point in time, they might have to draft a quarterback higher than you think. Hmm. Joining us here. Wow. Wow. What a day. Wearing cowboy, <laughs> a cowboy tie. That is a cowboy tie. That is exciting. That is <laughs> and it's been so long. I was ready to have Great a long back. time. Good to see you. <laughs> Good yes. to be back. We'll start with, who wants to start? Bruce, I'll go. the Cowboys guy, but no, Nick, go, go ahead. ahead. Your yeah. reaction to the story. All right, so what are we talking about here, I think, is an important thing to kind of set the template at. We're not talking about the top four quarterbacks. Nobody's the Cowboys are not trading up into the top, top six. Well, we're not talking about right. Well, I'm not. We'll I'll get to that part okay. in a moment because the top four are going to be gone in the top at worst 11 picks of the draft and probably the top five because someone's going to trade up. Yep. So we're not talking about those guys. If we were just talking about someone like Jordan Travis or Joe Milton, like a you know a fifth or sixth round pick. Sure. then I don't even think it's a story. No. You know what I mean? Like the Cowboys traded a fourth for Trey Lance. So I read this as if Bo Nix, if Michael Penix falls, maybe not to the Cowboys' first-round pick, but as you and I were talking about post-mock draft the other day, mm -hmm. if one of those guys is available in the second round, that the Cowboys could take them. And my response to that is if you like that quarterback, that's smart business. Oh. And the Cowboys haven't coached in, when it comes to quarterback business operated smartly. They have borrowed extensively from the future. Mm -hmm. Just this is a little cash cap thing just so people understand. The Cowboys the last three years have paid Dak $126 million. That has accounted for $64 million against their cap. So there's a $62 million borrow from future caps. That's why this year he's $55 million. And next year... He's $40 million to not be on the team. $40 million uh, dead money if he's gone uh, after this coming season because they've borrowed that money. So they need to, because they have not committed to Dak long term, at least be open to the possibility of resetting the quarterback contract clock like they did with Dak Prescott, a mid-round pick, by the way, uh, and do yeah. it that. And so, yeah, I don't think that would be bad business. I think that would be smart business. I, I think any time you draft a quarterback, if you think he, he's got the potential to be good, it's good business. Because even if he doesn't become your starter, that, that's capital that you can then tr translate into higher draft picks in the future. So I, I get that, and I've always supported that. It's a pretty vague tweet, though, right? I mean, at some point, mm. higher than you think. The last two quarterbacks I had, Dak was, what, fourth round? Yeah. Romo was a free agent. They haven't really drafted quarterbacks mm -hmm. high, so I don't know why they would suddenly, you know, jump up to get a guy unless they had some really strong feeling. But I'd like to see what Trey Lance can do. Trey Lance has had a year of sitting, a year of watching. He was drafted high for a reason. He's got ability. So what can he do in the system? Coach has so, always been the Trey Lance guy. Well, it's just, it's just hard for me to <laughs> make, <laughs> yeah. me imagine you're going to yeah. go get a guy in the third or fourth round that you think has more potential than, the than, third what, overall than what Trey Lance has after a year in your system. So is it an interesting tweet? Yeah. Could they draft someone higher than you think? Yeah, but what's the bar for the for the Cowboys? Is it the fourth round, third round? Just, just to clarify, he said this on NFL Live. So, it, it, so, so we were reading a quote, a quote that he gave on TV. So no, no, I, I, yeah, I saw the quote too, but even when I saw it, I'm like, Okay, well, well, it's well, coach, nice and vague. I'm glad you brought up Trey Lance because that was my first thought. Even before I thought about Dak Prescott, it was like Trey Lance must not be good at all. Yeah, I mean, real, like, I mean, that feels you, like this is what you drafted or traded for Trey Lance for the young quarterback. In case something no, happens fair. with Dak, he's supposed to be a guy. Is he not showing them anything when he's running scout team at all? Like, they must just be out on him to consider this because. Here's the problem, and you're right. Maybe they draft a quarterback in the sixth or seventh round or seventh or eighth, I think they have some picks. But they only have three picks in the first 150 picks. Mm -hmm. All right? They need an offensive lineman or a few offensive linemen. They need a running back. To waste that on a quarterback when you got Dak Prescott there, supposedly Trey Lance, I mean, I, I, I just think it's bad. And, look, this has been to me, and we, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, and it was incomplete. But this offseason, Coach, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> After saying you're going to be all in, how many starters? You lost your center, Tyler Biadish. You lost your best running back. You lost one of your best pass rushers in Dorrance Armstrong. You lost your defensive coordinator. You lost your offensive tackle. You're all right? Your, your, your best wide receiver is talking about uh, sitting out or holding out. You know, now there's reports that you don't like your best player, <laughs> Micah Parsons, and you're not going to re-sign your quarterback, and now you're talking about drafting somebody so, else? Oh, but hold on. You know, Nick, I, I, wait, I didn't wait. mean to do this. <laughs> what is he doing? But, fellas, oh, no. bring it out. Oh, no. I am no. sorry. Oh, no. I'm wait. sorry. That's too much. This offseason this this <laughs> has been an F My for the Dallas Cowboys. Boys, wow. I couldn't help myself, but it's extreme. just true. I got you. This wild. seems like right. a really well, that seems a little. It hard. is just true. <laughs> I mean, and, and what is going to so. submit? And we're all going. It might be fair. Thank you, Coach. Right. Goodness I mean, gracious. Man, what does all in mean? Do all in <laughs> means you go get one linebacker. Like, what does all <laughs> no, in mean? No, that quote has, has not. Where, that mean. quote is not lined up with their offseason. There's no question you, you about think? that. That part I don't disagree with. What I what I do though wonder is on the quarterback part of it is if they are – the Cowboys do seem to like to negotiate through the media. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Another thing. And if they about. are – because I think they are in a playing a bit of chicken with Dak Prescott. Because I'm sure whether they're saying it or not, one of the things that they think they have as kind of a, a bullet in the chamber, so to speak, is, hey, Dak, the last few notable Cowboy quarterbacks, what's their post-career earnings sure. look like? Mm -hmm. You see Troy Aikman making – Eight figures for not. I'm not counting Troy's money. I love him. They deserve right. the money, but those are big. Two of the most high-profile NFL jobs, playing. right? For him, <laughs> and you can say, mm -hmm. you know, this off-season you're going to entertain. You're going to go to the highest bidder, but you know what? If it's about money, how much money is it worth being the Cowboys' quarterback right. versus being the Tennessee Titans' quarterback or whomever? I also would say this, and I don't. I mean, the, I don't know if you agree with me or not, Coach. I mean, are we I, assuming I, that Dak's going to be a really good announcer? Well, no, I don't. Well, I don't. <laughs> the, no, but career? even when no, during your career, you're making money off the field. Yeah, and so no, Cowboys that's fair. Team. And, and, yeah, but, the, and but this is where I wanted to right. see if you agree right. with me good. on. Backfield's I think that this past season was a worst case scenario from a Dak contract, figuring out Dak's future standpoint, which is. You got the best and the worst mixed into one. If you're the Cowboys and you're like, all right, we're going to have to figure out after the 2023 season, we know we're facing a deadline on Dak Prescott and his deal. We're going to have to figure out what we're doing. Are we going to move off him or are we going to extend him? What are we going to do? And in the regular season, he has the best one of his right. career. Yep. He's a legitimate MVP right. candidate. And it's like, wow. You know what I mean? He, he lost his offensive coordinator, Get did that. He, he, right. Exactly right. And in the playoff game, he has, I would argue, his worst postseason game as a significant favorite. All he, of it. He wasn't and, alone in that game. No, I totally that agree first with half, you. There was a 95-yard drive. There was a 75. Like the, there was a there's lot, a lot of, people, of a lot of people to blame. Uh, your boy had one half tackle or whatever. <laughs> well, why is he my guy? Yeah. Well, I, I know you want to go on his podcast um, all okay, the time. Okay, that's fine. It's a solo podcast. He doesn't have guests. But the point is, it really complicated the situation. Right? Like, if Dak had just been bad, it's yeah. easy. If it had just been a regular year where it's like, hey, we win a playoff game, we get beat by the Niners in round two, it's probably easy. But he was so good in the regular season and then so bad along with his teammates in the playoffs, it muddied the waters entirely on what they're going to do right. moving forward at this position. Can I just uh, – we only have about one more minute yeah. left. But I'm going to show you a graphic, Coach, and I think, I think Coach likes this stuff. Uh, once – the franchise quarterback comes in, has a monster year huh? after Jimmy G, one of the winningest quarterbacks of all time, and, yeah. and once Jordan Love was drafted, which Aaron Rodgers did not like, he had to pour himself a large glass of whiskey, two oh, fingers, yeah. I think he said. Uh, so, Coach, do you like the idea that if the Cowboys did draft a quarterback, Dak would somehow get to the next level? Yeah, I don't know if I'd put Dak on the same graphic as Tom Brady <laughs> and Rodgers, but I see what you're saying. Well, like, I think those two guys are, are pretty spe <laughs> special, and I'm not I'm not killing Dak here, but I don't know if he's quite at their level. And, yeah, you can, you can look at this and say guys typically play better in a contract year and when they're playing for money, which is fine, but I don't think Dak has anything to worry about. We saw what Kirk Cousins just that got paid. He's going to get money no he's, matter he's what. He's going to get paid no matter what. They've had three 12-5 seasons 
He, what is it, 36 uh, touchdowns, like nine picks, best completion percentage, best quarter record. He's got all these great things that he did in the system. And for, for him, he's got to see who the head coach is. He doesn't know McCarthy's on his last year, too. Oh. Oh. And there's a lot of things that Dak can look at organizationally. And here's my advice to Dak. Don't worry about the Dallas alumni organization things that you're going to go sign autographs after you retire. Go get as much money as you can right now and – and try to Why maximize your earning potential. Why would one of your graphics? He's so kind to that. <laughs> I, I and when he it. doesn't like mine. No, I, he... Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.